Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kordam. We are back for some more Pathfinder Kingmaker in Last Aslanti mode. So, we got the companion quest for Miss Lindsay. We have to talk to her in the, in the tavern. And after that, we are going to go for some kingdom management. Uh, it's not going to be anything too complex. We're just going to be working with um, ranking up our counselors or our advisors. But first, I want to take care of the companion quest, just to get it done. There she is, Lindsay. Okay. Did you steal the money, woman? Let's go find your press. Now, if I remember correctly, and I hope I'm not mistaken on this, I believe that the the thingy that she purchased is in the swamp area. I'm gonna take out Ekundayo. I'm trying to spread the experience a little bit here. So Ekundayo will sit out. We're gonna take Lindsay with us. Take care of this. And then come right back. So yeah, I do think it is over here. Yeah, find the printing press that didn't make it to the capital. Okay. We're gonna wait until, you know, our characters reach their destinations. <laughs> but I do really want to dedicate myself to ranking up the advisors as soon as we are done with this. Because there's a lot of times that I keep delaying it. And I'm not even sure if I'm doing a, a good choice or a poor choice by doing that. Let's keep, keep going here. We can deal with this area. Uh, while we are fatigued and we rest on the way back that's my plan at least I must replenish yes. My powers. yes i know you guys want to replenish your powers uh i think i'm not sure but i think we have to deal with some bandits here so i'm just gonna buff up a little bit given that we are going to rest anyway after this might as well make sure we are not going to get ourselves into much trouble. Do you even have like a, a semi-decent weapon? Eh, you have a heavy crossbow. You could think that. And anything else I might want to give you? Err. Stop fidgeting, thingy. Okay, this is good. She can stay as is. Way too much of overkill on buffs, but whatever. Just want to get this done. There are some companion quests that I really don't don't enjoy too much. This is one of them. There's just a lot of back and forth and nothing really special happening. Uh, they should be here. And this might actually have um, diplomacy or intimidation check with these bandits. Just, yeah, Intimidate, 20, okay. You have 10 RPs disappear, go. And they go away. We got our experience from the skill check. We take back Lindsay's shipment and the request is progressed. Let's choose something beautiful to print. 3,600 experience. Uh, she leveled up. Congratulations. I'm gonna give her some stuff here. <laughs> Doesn't really matter what. Uh, she has precise shot, extra performance, point blank shot, precise shot, yeah. Um, let me see here. Not that I'm gonna take her, but might as well try and do something useful. Rapid shot. Or, you know what, just buff us up for now with lingering performance, I think is best. You have heroism, you have mirror image. Go for sense vitals. <coughs> and you are done. Let's get out of here. Oh, we... Hmm. A future time that I come back here, I'm going to take care of that area. I think we should be good 
to deal with the owl bears as well. But I, I always have a, some, a certain difficulty uh, understanding oh, when I should go for the um, for the owl bears. I never really know wh when I reach that threshold. Ugh, I forgot about this. Okay, do that. I never know the threshold um, when I can start safely dealing with owl bears. I either underestimate them or I overestimate them. I never get it just right. Which is unfortunate, obviously. And I think I have some owl bears over there. I think I have some owl bears at the bridge as well. Come on, horsey. A rest would be welcome. You guys are gonna have to handle the fatigue until we get the, uh, until we get home. We should gather our strength. Thank you. <clears throat> I believe Lindsay's quest is done, at least that part of it. Uh, do I have to talk to her? No, the quest is just done. Okay, so let's check out our kingdom events here. We have ancient tradition and opportunity. We can give this one, for example, to Valerie. Being an opportunity, I'm not going to bother using crisis points. But I want to look at my projects here. Uh, sorry, my rank ups. I can rank up Tristian, Rigongar, Valerie. Okay, so everybody's busy except Valerie. So I am gonna have Valerie do this then. Let's rank her up. Success, 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 success. <clears throat> Events, Bandits Outrage, let's use Mr. Rigongar, we can use Mr. Jubilost, wait, didn't I tell you to... I'm confused. The problem is, <laughs> okay, I have to rank up one of these, and I think I'm gonna rank up probably Economy here. So, you cannot do this right now. But you can do that, and you can do that. So, let's rank up Mr. Jubilost. I need to keep an eye on the Ancient Curse timer. Because sometimes I get lost in ranking them up, and time passes and I forget. And that's never good. Triumph, success... We have 188 BP right now. Opportunity. Problem. Opportunity. 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 Okay. <clears throat> so let me see here. In terms of projects, is there something that I might want? I could give this to Valerie. But I like to prioritize events rather than projects, unless it's something really important. So you could take that. You can take that. Mm. Or, or this. Okay, this expires. I'm not going to have a chance to get into this one. But it's, it's, these are opportunities, so it doesn't really matter too much. You take that, and the Herbalists, we have some more time, but we have Jubilost. So who do I want to rank up? I can either rank up Tristin or I can rank up Rigongar. I'm going to rank up Rigongar. <clears throat> so this means you can go, 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 nobody... Nobody. Rank up. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> she failed, that's fine. General wants an audience. Opportunity, 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 opportunity. Okay, so we are in a good position. I'm gonna check my timer here. Oops. 70 days, we still have time. Let's check out Rigongar. Again, we're gonna skip the dialogue, just look at the choices. I prefer Arcane. <clears throat> and I think the faster we can level up Arcane, uh, the faster we can get the teleports. Another acerbic ring. I'm not I'm not actually sure if these stack. Okay. Thank you. Let's see if we have more artisan gifts. Yes, we do. Dragon scale plate. Okay, what can I request? A one-handed hammer, a one-handed axe, a crossbow, a metal shield, plate armor. <clears throat> I don't really know what these give. So I'll just say, do what you think is best. Okay, what did we get? Wait, what? Return onslaught to... Oh, I think... Okay. <clears throat> the onslaught was robbed once again. We're gonna have to look for it. We have the dragon scale plate. I forgot to give her armor back, as usual. Let's compare. So, full plate versus full plate, plus two enchanted, <clears throat> but this one gives the wearer acid resistance 30, so it's a, a free upgrade here. And the acerbic ring, which I'm not sure if it stacks, I'm gonna put it here. And if I remember, which I likely won't, <laughs> I'll try and look online to see if these stack, um, or even in the combat log if I have a choice to do so. Okay, so I'm gonna put my people to work and then we're gonna go help out our artisan because, again, artisan quests are very important. Okay, all of these are opportunities and everything is filled in. Perfect. I believe we have to go to the Thorn River or the Thorn Ford, okay. This one is very simple and very easy. Nothing. Uh, do I have trash to sell? Hmm. I don't know why I have a feeling that those are for, are used for something. I, I I might just be completely wrong. But I'm going to keep them with me for now. We are going to leave. We're going to go to the Thorn Ford. Put these there. I should also do the events to maybe train some of my other companions. <clears throat> Let me see if I can actually do that. Or even if there's a project that I'm interested in. Wait, economy. Don't want this. This would be cool, but can't right now. This doesn't really matter. 4 BP per week, but it's 500. Uh, is it worth it, man? Unlocks a special region upgrade. Have fun. I can train Tristian. No, I can't. <laughs> Jethal, I don't think I care about. Okay. Everybody has a job to do. Um, where am I going? I'm going 
Thornford. There. Find this, find this, find this. No. Yeah, we have a cutscene. That's a ridiculously low price for a piece like this. It's dwarven made, you know. My grandfather used to wear it. We cannot speed these up. That's none of my concern. It looks broken. Can't give you a coin more. I can drink some coffee. Okay. <clears throat> so who are you? What's in the bag? <laughs> this is the artisan quest. We have a lawful good diplomacy check here. Unfortunately, we don't have a chance to actually buff up for this. But as long as we roll a four or more, we're fine. Good. We got the incomplete onslaught armor. That is, I think, the only thing we had to do. We have to bring it back to Mr. Dragon. Which means, again, <coughs> moving back and forth. Uh, I will take this, though, before I forget. Gimme. And now we have to go all the way over there. A rest would be welcome. Let's actually rest over here. I will also try to see if... Uh, okay, I'll see it afterwards then. <clears throat> I want to see if I can make new buildings already or not. I don't think I can. And I do believe I need Arcane 2 in order to actually be able to build the teleports. Remind me to rest before we leave this area. So we don't have to rest along the way. There you go, my friend. I agree with you. Okay. That's done. What about you? You still say nothing? Okay. Okay, that's done. All clear, Your Grace. I can see my destination. No, no, no. <clears throat> I told you guys to remind me. It's your fault, not mine. <laughs> it is your fault. Ah, my short-term memory is something special. I will say that much. Okay, we rested. Let's get out of here. We are going to do some more rank oops. Enter, uh, throne room. Jod Kafkan? Yep. 
extremely unusual message written by Jubilost. I think this is his report on our barony. Okay. Between the bogs of the River Kingdoms and the infertile clay soils of Brevoy lies the region called the Stolen Lands, a picturesque area which combines the worst features of both previously mentioned countries. It's a woodland where herds of deer, swarms of mosquitoes and gangs of bandits have their pastures. Though the latter were formidably decreased in numbers thanks to the efforts of the local baron, a protege of the rest of Swordlords who's promised to bring some resemblance of order to these lands. Hoping to learn to what degree it succeeded, your faithful servant went to the Stolen Lands himself. Certainly, I preceded my visit with the latter, but mailing service in this new barony functions with an efficiency of zero. No one came to greet me except for a horde of angry kobolds. Here, these creatures can be met way more often than guardsmen or, let's say, street cleaners. I barely managed to fight off those pests, then I narrowly escaped drowning on the river ford. The only thing here more rarely met than a paved road is a good, well-maintained bridge. Every ruler ought to remember that the realm's roads are his face, and here they are filthy and in a desperate need of good old stone. After all those misadventures, I finally reached the capital. Compared to other parts of the barony, the city looks relatively good, despite the smell. <laughs> I should give credit to the ruler's efforts. There is building in progress everywhere. Passing by, traders praise the baron for eliminating, eliminating the bandits and express hopes that someday he'll deal with the wild land monsters as well. I wouldn't recommend that you choose this destination for our summer vacation, but if you are tough and unpretentious, if you can work hard and defend yourself, you might try your luck here. Working hands are in great demand in the capital. Also, there are plenty of jobs for sellswords and free adventurers. After all, the local baron used to be one of them not so long ago. As for me, I guess I'll stay here for a while and watch how the new barony grows. If I don't drown in some swamp, become a snack for some owl beast or die of dysentery, <laughs> we'll meet in the next issue. Thank you, Jubilost. I think we can talk to him about this. I have received the journal. Ah, okay. I thought he was gonna give some kind of quest progress or experience, but new. Okay. Dealt with that. Everybody's busy. How are we in terms of rank ups? Can't do much because everybody is doing something. <clears throat> okay. In terms of... Managing my place here. Do I want to build something? Let's see. Ah, oh, we have a free shrine. That's right. Uh, but that's kind of it. Sometimes I build some shops and stuff just to increase my economy. But I think for right now I don't really care too much about that. Uh, how are we looking? Military 2, economy 2... Okay. So, where are we off to, my friends? <clears throat> where are we off to? 66, day, 66 days is quite enough time to do some... some stuff around the place. Nothing over here, nothing over there. So I think I'm going to explore and potentially do a little bit of the... Um, beneath the Stolen Lands as well. So we would want to go over there to the Tenebrous Depths. And along the way, I guess I can check out these places. So let's go over here. We're basically uh, killing I some time. My I will want to pick that up. Might as well do that now. Sometimes it's also weird why my main character is fatigued but nobody else is. Oh, this is the North Gnarl Marshes. Never mind. I'm still gonna wait a little bit. He might get exhausted, but it is what it is. This, I think, is a book event. Well, maybe not. What is this, then? Oh, I know what this is. This is that area that can be a little bit dangerous. Okay, but we can deal with this now. 
the one thing to consider here is that these enemies, uh, which I forget their names, they deal a um, decent amount of damage and they charge. The important part about the enemies is that they charge. <clears throat> okay, and they will not charge your front line, they will charge your back line. So you really want to make sure that at least your main character is well protected against them. Because otherwise, you might just get a game over out of the blue. Okay, so long duration, let's go. It is a cool area though, it also has like a, a dungeon underneath. Yeah, there they are. Bogards is their name. Let's get back a little bit here. Okay. Let's not mess around with this. <clears throat> we're gonna buff medium duration. And we're gonna start killing. Did you get the... Ah, he did. I was wondering if, it's, if he was too far away to get the, the good hope. And I think that the worst thing they can do is charge your backline and cast fear. We do have remove fear, everybody is well protected, we have mirror image on my main character. <clears throat> so it is time to... Before I forget, I don't think they toss any arrows, but let's just do it. Drink our mutagens. And I don't think there's anything else that I need. With the exception of hasting up our party and get going. Okay. This is gonna be a burst drive-by drive massacre of Bogards. I am yours to command. A reckoning. Who did you find? A guy down there, okay. Just don't... <clears throat> don't go for me. Go for them. Okay, good. Rigong are in the front. This is also why we like to make him tanky. There goes the mirror image. But we are good. Sup, bitch, come here. I am your shield. Sing, woman, the song of your it people. We shall murder the frog like thingies. Keep your eyes open. No fear. Alright. Let's give them absolutely no breathing room. We don't want them to be able to move. Okay. If I had the fireball here, I could open up the fight with the fireball as well. Our time has um, come. I was going to do something. What was it? Ah, sing. Don't hesitate. And we're going to go for the prophet because he is a caster. I'm restless. Okay. I will protect. We're going to start shooting this guy in the back. My skills are getting rusty. Try to knock this guy down. <clears throat> yeah, he's casting fire thingies. Okay. Well done. So we see here there's an entrance. It's actually quite easy to miss. It's not very obvious that there's like this little cave here, like a rabbit hole. But we are gonna go down the rabbit hole, like Alice. And take care of the rest of them. Give the order. So you can go for the brute, and everybody else can go for these guys up front. Together we are up and we shall focus on this one as well. We will okay. Doing short work of them. Very nice. Let's keep this up. 25 seconds on haste, that's at least one more fight. Stop running away, bitch. I'm listening. You're mine. You're mine. They've opened to your orders. Ha! Primitive. 
Hmm. Two profits. I think I'm gonna buff myself with resistance um, from fire. They are actually casting... Well, one is casting fear. He's sh making my people shaken. Shouldn't matter too much for us. Let's get this done. Uda Adayana. Cordon Pina always makes fun of the casting sounds when she's here with me in the room. <laughs> uh, our haste wore off. Let's get another charge here. This is why these wands are so good. For spells like haste, displacement and whatnot. And I like to charge two of them at the same time to try and make sure that they cannot charge my backline as well. Or at least it discourages them from doing so. Tripped. Good. <clears throat> they are gonna have a big bad boss at the end here, but... For that one we're gonna use some more tools. We're not gonna go all cocky oh, like I'm this. Any fun to be had. Keep your eyes open. We shall overcome. This is fine. Good. I think their boss is over here. He's like surrounded by people, yeah. This is him. Okay. <clears throat> 45 seconds should be more than enough. We're gonna get that. Uh, you are going to sing. We're gonna get displacement on my leopard. With an extend charge. We're gonna get displacement on Valerie with an extend charge as well. Uh, and you... Well, might as well use Guarded Earth. <clears throat> it's gonna be overkill, but... The better we can do this, the better. <laughs> okay, let's also cast Divine Power for extra fun. And let's get going. I would like to charge their boss. There he is, the Bogart Champion. Can I see his stats? He has 28 AC, 16 touch, very low touch. Oh, reflex is very low. <coughs> Which means... Yes. I'm gonna use some force bombs on him. Will That's for sure. Uh, you are gonna start shooting him. You shoot him as well. And I am gonna go for a stinking cloud. Uh, I will want you guys inside the guarded earth, though. Okay, so Valerie, we're gonna charge the Prophet. Rigongar will charge the Prophet as well. Leopard, charge the Savage. Doggy, charge the Savage. Okay. And let's position my people here. So I want Ekundayo inside guarded earth. Cordon Pina inside guarded earth. You will be inside for sure, and I will come inside after a little second. Okay, Stinking Clouds. Disabled. One, two, yeah, only two of them. Valerie is gonna... Oh my god, does she have armor? Oh, thank god she does. Because this guy is gonna hit her. Uh, let's focus on the big bad guy. Cordon Pina, let's toss out a prayer. And I'm gonna move in. Okay. You utter bitch. He's charging my friend. Let's get another Sinking Cloud here. And I'm gonna send my doggy to intercept if possible. Yeah, nice. We tripped him. <laughs> Perfect. Force Bomb, work! And he went down. This fight is now officially over. And there he goes. Yeah! 
but trust me, um, it might seem very easy, but you definitely don't want to underestimate this guy. I'm pretty sure I have lost one of my last Aslanti runs on, on this encounter specifically. I came here thinking, oh, okay, these are just Bogards. We can just kill them freely. And then the guy just completely smacked, I think, Valerie as well. Killed her. And then everything went to hell. It was unpleasant. But you learn, you know, you learn. You learn not to... Not to underestimate certain enemies. These guys have a lot of really cool items. Uh, not necessarily to use, but to sell. It does give a, a fair amount of money. We're gonna check out the, the entire loot in a second. Without a doubt. Some more down here. I could have sworn that this area was more to the, to the east on the map. But yeah, I'm not very good at remembering locations, so I I'm not surprised that I was wrong. Okay. So now we have these guys, we have some containers to loot. Take all of this. Nunchucks. This is actually a really, really cool place to come to early on <clears throat> in the game. I think you might even get away with just ignoring everything that's over here and just looting this guy. Uh, because you get this item here. The flaming nunchaku. Plus one. And especially if you are making some kind of martial character, especially one for the front line, um, a lot of people tend to like dipping into Monk because it will give you a lot of really nice bonuses, such as AC bonuses, Flurry of Blows, etc, etc. And this being a Monk weapon works with Flurry of Blows, so you can have the extra attack from this weapon. It's a plus one enchanted weapon, it also deals fire damage, so it's a, it's a very cool early game weapon for um, any character dipping into Monk, or even just a Monk. The other one being, I think, the quarterstaff on the on the old Beldame. But it's cool because you can you can get it right here. I don't think you even have to fight anything, so it's a free pickup essentially. Focus on the goal. I think we may have. Oh no. Now I think we may have gotten everything, right? I, can see. I, can I believe so. Okay, so before we leave the area, we're gonna check out the loot. See what we got. How much did the guy give me in terms of experience, by the way? I'm curious. Um, stinking cloud. This doesn't matter. 810. I, I expected more, actually. But still not bad. Still not bad. Ah, wait. I know that Jubilost hit the guy with the force bomb. It's not easy to... <laughs> to go through this. Rigongar, Leopard, Valerie, Leopard, Dog, Ekundayo. Rigongar, Valerie, Leopard, Bogar, you lost. We hit. We dealt 21 damage. 6d4 plus 6. So we used 6 dice. <clears throat> Okay, so six dice. It deals one d4. So the plus six is from our intelligence modifier. So one d4 plus one d4 for every odd numbered alchemist level. 
I'm kind of guessing that this starts on level 3. But I'm not sure. It doesn't say that it starts on level 3, so maybe it's it starts on level 1. So for every odd level, 1, 3, 5, 7, this would be 4 dice. Oh, plus, plus the initial 1d4, so 5 dice. 5 dice would mean that my acerbic ring does not work. Okay, sorry. Time, time for some science here. Quiet, I'm thinking... Uh, okay. <clears throat> I cannot hurt my allies. Damn it. Well, I'll have to try and see it later on. This is something that I've been meaning to to um, to investigate, but I always, always forget. A rest would be welcome. Okay, let's rest. I admit, when I sat... <clears throat> Continue making our way to the Tenebrous Depths. And let's go in. Now, this is an area where I actually want to look at the dialogue of every single NPC <coughs> and maybe items we pick up, like books or, uh, you know, just pages oh of stuff. Because it's one of the areas that when I picked up Pathfinder Kingmaker again as preparation to make this playthrough for the channel, this was new for me. I had never played this DLC back when I had played Pathfinder Kingmaker for the first few times. So I skipped all the dialogue to make sure that this area would be fresh for this playthrough. So I want to see what happens here in terms of story. We have Mr. Zeliden, what seems like a silver dragon. The silver dragon stares at you for a long time, unblinking. Maybe it's just a trick of the light, but you think you see a heavy mercury teardrop roll from its pearly eye. You have answered my call, Protector of Galarian. I will have you know, no one has ever returned from these caves alive. Many valiant heroes before you have sacrificed their lives to bring victory one step closer. I have not forgotten their feats, nor will I forget yours. Okay, so who are you? Tell me about yourself. What do you want to know? I will hide nothing from you. Who are you? My name is Zeldan. I am a loyal servant of Apsu. The Waybringer is one of the oldest and mightiest creatures in existence. According to Draconic lore, he and his mate Tiamat spawned the dragon gods who created the whole world. Apsu is the patron deity of all good and metallic dragons. He remains a father figure to almost all dragons whom he loves as his children. He is numbered among the divine creatures which fought in the battle to defend all of creation against Rovagog. Unsurprisingly, most of Apsu's worshippers are metallic dragons. Few non-dragons take up his cause, although honorable humanoids with an interest in draconic lore have taken up his faith from time to time. They typically wear a gold dragon's foot brooch, or have other custom-made equipment in the shape of a dragon's foot. Golarion lacks much a centralized Church of Apsu. The largest congregation of humanoid Apsu worshippers on Golarion is known as the Platinum Band, which maintains relatively small centers of worship in Opara and Absalom. Okay. Thousands of years ago, my god appointed me to watch over this place, where deep in the depths there um, hides a great evil. I knew at once the repulsive smell of the beast, but it took me centuries to locate the egg that he left. All this time I've stood guard here, looking for a way to destroy the spawn before it hatched and brought immeasurable sufferings to those who dwell upon the land. Okay, so perhaps who is that? We just read about it, but... The dragon casts a pearly skyward glance. Oh, Apsu. He is more ancient than all the gods whose names you know. He is the maker of all, who stands at the origin of the multiverse. Few mortals remember him, but we, metallic dragons, still praise him in our prayers. Is it just me or are you really sad? So many heroes passed here. The noblest souls of Galarian, selfless protectors of their homeland, ready to sacrifice their lives to save it from the spawn of the beast. Okay, Rovagug. 
Imprisoned since the age of creation, the god Rovagog, also known as the Rough Beast, the Great Destroyer and the World Breaker, seeks only to destroy creation and the other gods. Believed to be imprisoned in a state of torpor somewhere deep in Galarian, his increasingly restless stirrings are taken by many to be the cause of volcanic activity and earthquakes. His worshippers are known for embodying the god's dominion over destruction, disaster and wrath. I remember each and every one, striding fearlessly down into the darkness, almost none of them have returned, and it's all my fault. Dagon lowers his huge head. True repentance can be heard in this thunderous voice. I made a mistake and they pay dearly for it. You see, I never understood the true nature of the monster. For many years, I and the heroes who answered my call would wander these dungeons, thinking that the monster larva was the greatest threat. It was only when I found the egg and touched its shell that I realized the spawn had turned the entire dungeon into its nest. Madness, mortal. Darkness and madness are the monster's sword and shield, its food and the materi material that its shell is made of. The heroes I summoned here descended into madness, they lost their minds, and the spawn of the beast fed upon their insanity. Somehow, I avoided the same fate. They went down into the darkness driven by the noblest of intentions, and were rewarded only with eternal torment. What are you doing here? I am guarding the spawn of Rovagug, who uh, that sleeps in the caves beneath us. I summon heroes to help me defeat it. It is a long and joyless vigil, but I believe that it will one day be over. Perhaps you yourself are the hero who will finally achieve this long-awaited victory? I hope so. <laughs> I intend on doing this unless I feel like it's going to, it's going to be too, too dangerous uh, for this last Aslanti run. Because when we go for him, we will definitely be playing on Unfair for a long time. So, Unfair spawn of Rovagug is not very pleasant. Thank you for your answers. The truth is the least I can give you for your feet. So what feat do you expect of me? An egg laid by the abom abominable Rovagug has cursed this dungeon for thousands of years. The larva of the beast will destroy half of the river kingdoms if it hatches. The shell that surrounds it is a labyrinth of darkness and madness, inhabited by thousands of its former victims. Hundreds of heroes perished as they sought a way through it. But now I know where the egg is, and the path to it is almost clear. Almost. What blocks the way to the monster? Oh, that is the saddest and scariest part. The spawn of the beast feeds on nightmares, and its very shell is made of madness. The caves around are filled with insanity. It has flooded them with an ocean of darkness, which distorts the very nature of the multiverse. Heroes who approach grow mad or perish in great suffering. This gives the egg its strength. The monster feeds on their terror and pain. Neither alive nor dead, but tormented eternally by their worst nightmares, these brave heroes still wander the labyrinth. Find and destroy four of their strongest, and the power of the beast's madness will weaken. Then I'll be able to crack open the shell. We must destroy the monster before it hatches and grows strong. The fallen priestess, the wary traveler, the wicked chanter, the captain and his horrifying slave. Deliver them into peace and the path to the enemy will be opened. Why don't you kill this for yourself? The dragon's body shudders. It would seem that the thought of what hides in the depths can chill the soul of even a mighty dragon. The egg is surrounded by an ever-shifting labyrinth of insanity and darkness. This insanity which the larva emits is capable of subduing even the most valiant of heroes. I have ventured down before and it was only by a miracle that I slipped the fate that has ensnared so many other brave heroes. If I tried to vanquish it alone, then sooner or later it would devour me, drink my soul and add me to the horde of the nightmares that guard it. Who? Who would be able to destroy me then? Thus I continue summoning heroes to this place. Many of those who answered my call turned their backs and returned to their lives once they discovered how slim are their chances of victory, and I do not blame them. But my vigil is nearing its end. The hour of the last battle with the monster draws near. If you can manage to weaken its shell, I can crack it, and we will finish it together. Tell me about the Fallen Priestess. Her name is Tyoko Sakasama. She led a party of adventurers here, noblest heroes and truest friends. Together they defeated many foes, but they'd never faced anything like this. Tioko once served Lamashtu. Then this brave and wise woman recognized how disgusting her patron was and gathered the strength to leave her service, finding shelter in the hands of Desna. Alas, Lamashtu is called the Mistress of Insanity for a reason. The labyrinth tricked Tioko's mind and stole from her Desna's protections. When next her reason failed, she returned to Lamashtu and sacrificed her friends to her cruel mistress one by one. Ever since, she has lurked in the depths, seeking new gifts for her mistress. 
Alas, the last embers of good in her soul have long faded. She has become a monster. The beast has consumed her utterly. Okay. Uh, what about the wary traveler? He was a gnome named Balzess. He was quite a famous traveler, a pathfinder on three continents. But bleaching gives no quarter to his people. There came a day when he grew tired of new roads. When he heard my call, he came, knowing it would be his final adventure. He did, not he did not anticipate victory, but hoped at least for an honorable death. Alas, the darkness reached out to him from the abominable spawn of the beast and refused him even that. An aura of madness filled the gnome with delusions of grandeur and transported his mind into the marvelous fey world where he sits, a godlike ruler. He has become a frightening, dangerous and pathetic caricature of his former self. A king without a kingdom, the god of a rotten soul. Immersed in sweet dreams, he wanders the halls, barking orders at the wandering monsters. A sad sight to behold. His death will bring him not only peace, but also restore the dignity he's lost. I think this is the first guy we're gonna face. Uh, what about the captor? The captor <coughs> is the greatest wizard I ever managed to talk into visiting this gloomy place. Also very dangerous. I had high hopes for him, and so I turned a blind eye to the darkness in his soul. I expect he was already insane before he even came here. Nothing else could explain his indifference towards suffering. But he was strong and confident, and managed to get quite close to the spawn, very close, before he met his end. Be warned that the captain does not appear alone. He is always accompanied by a disgusting beast that he summoned from beyond the world. The two are firmly bound in death and can revive each other, so they must both be killed at once. And what about the Wicked Chanter? She is the dungeon's greatest mystery, and also the last um, boss, I feel, before the, the spawn. In the long history of my vigil here, she has but recently appeared. Heroes who set off into the depths began to encounter something quite strange. A woman in rags who wanders the darkness, accompanied by a horde of monsters. She is known to announce her arrival in song. She sings and she hunts, and sings as she kills. The monsters of the dark serve her loyally and faithfully, protecting her to their dying breath. I know not who the chanter is. Many brave heroines have disappeared into the dungeon, but none possessed such control over monsters. I only know that the chanter is more insane than the three other nightmares of the dungeon combined, and the terror she carries with her knows no mercy. She must be defeated. I see. The feat I ask of you is most dangerous, almost certainly suicidal. If you agree, I want you to understand what you are getting into. I need supplies. Of course, but forgive me, my treasures are not endless and I cannot provide you with free supplies. If you require the aid of a priest, select a scroll and I will read it for you. But be careful. Down in the labyrinth you are on your own. Do not go into the depths without a servant of the hired forces in your party. A, a good advice, to be sure. So yeah, we have the quest to kill them all. Um, some cool stuff here. Mithril full plate plus two. But also nothing particularly amazing. We can... Oh! <laughs> Sorry. I forgot to check the loot because, again, my short-term memory is what it is. So what we got from the other place with the, the frog-like enemies... We got some masterwork light maces, some masterwork great clubs. We got the flaming nunchaku, which is cool. We got some cloaks of resistance, some rings of protection, amulet of natural armor plus two, which I can actually give someone, uh, like you, for example. Okay. We got a great club plus two from their leader, and that is mostly it, I feel. Okay, so we can sell all of this. Just checking if there's something I might want. Nay. We can sell the nunchaku because I'm not going to be using any monks. Great club can go. This can go. These can go. These can go. Plus three, plus one, plus one. I like to always keep a few around. 11, 12,000 gold right here. We are up to 100,000. Not bad. Let's turn off your wand. We can spin the night here and rest for free. 
this is, by the way, a DLC. This is a DLC for the, the Beneath the Stolen Lands. Uh, it's not part of the base game. But it does have a few challenges, a few interesting challenges, a very dangerous um, final boss, and also a lot of very cool items. It is also one of the places where it feels like the game gets bugged out a lot, especially in terms of music. Like the soundtrack playing in the background can overlap. It, it has happened to me a lot, honestly. So I may have to restart the game uh, when we start delving into this dungeon. We'll see. We also have this guy, Honest Guy, which honestly to me reminds me very well of someone. And I will say who after we're done with talking to him. A tall, bulky fellow with a shaved head studies you closely, paying special attention to your equipment. He grins. Hello, my friend. Do you want to look your finest? I have the best wares and the fairest prices in all generous debts. And who are you? I am an honest guy. The lad strikes his chest proudly with his fist. I stand here honestly, welcoming heroes and seeing them off to their feats of glory. I honestly collect the gear from their breathless corpses, and I honestly sell it to the next heroes. You freely and calmly admitted you pillage corpses. Forgive me my skepticism, but do you really never do that yourself? You've never taken anything from an enemy you've killed or a dead body you've found? No, never. <laughs> Taking the equipment from a defeated enemy is honest. You're just taking advantage of the situation without doing anything to help. Hmm, you just gave me an idea. Maybe I should be called a smart guy, not an honest guy. <laughs> Still not very nice. We put our lives at risk for everyone else while you profit from our misfortune. Are you saying the honest guy isn't fair? Then I have no shame. Why, do you? The plunderer nearly drops his spear in indignation. So he has a spear, <clears throat> he has a shield, he's called Honest Guy, he's bald. Of course I do. Maybe I get very sad every time I loot a new corpse. Maybe I'm thinking, you know, what a pity this great hero has perished. I'll tell you what, I promise you I'll change. I'll donate a part of my earnings to orphans and do the Iomaday Paladins for their fight against the demons. And to druids to help preserve the dwindling dinosaurs. I give you my word, I am an honest guy. No one is more honest than me. So basically, I think this is just like um, an easter egg, a reference to Patches, uh, a character in, in Dark Souls. The guy is always tricking the player into trying to kill them and taking their gear. So it's a, it's a cool reference here. Does Zelleran allow your pillaging? What could he have a problem with? I'm betraying no one, I attack no one, I just pick up things that belong to no one and find them new owners. Perfectly honest, isn't it? And besides, that scaly worm could be so uh, would be so bored without me. He never has anyone to talk to. Okay, so what does he have? He has some weird items, let's say. Nothing that you typically use, <laughs> in my experience. He has some helmets which can be useful. Cloak of resistance, and then he has some 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 cool stuff here. A wand of displacement is useful. A Wand of Haste is definitely useful, but other than that, doesn't really matter too much what he has to sell. I believe that's all that exists in this area. I don't remember this corner, actually. Let me just check this out. There's a skeleton there. The, the obelisk is covered with the names of long-forgotten heroes. Alright. So, yeah, I'm going to park my characters over here. This is the entrance. I will just read this. It appears to have been a powerful artifact, but its magic has long since dissipated. Okay, yeah, it's like I was saying. I'm going to park my characters here. In the next episode, we are going to explore at least a little bit of Tenebrous Depths. Um... I would ideally like to clear out the first four levels, which I think are the only levels that are available to me at this point in the game. But depending on how it goes, I may leave sooner. We'll, we'll, we'll see how things go. The purpose of this is killing some time while our companions are doing their events in Kingdom Management. Uh, getting some experience, getting some loot, everything is going to help us moving forward. 
Um, and then, you know, we're going to leave and continue on our journey. Being that the main motivator to move ahead is going to be the Ancient Curse Part 2. So we basically have to wait 64 days, or in this case, 50 days. Because you can do this when there are 14 days left. Everything else is just something that you can do as you go around. You don't have to worry about anything else here. Um, so yeah, as always my friends, we're going to end this episode here. I would like to thank you all for being here with me in the channel, watching some Pathfinder Kingmaker. If you have any questions, suggestions, anything at all, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. Many more videos coming soon, and I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe everyone.